Happy 2024, everybody. If we have not met before, my name is Emily Steffen, and I'm here to share hopefully a super fun time together as we kind of talk about ringing in our new year with some making goals and some making resolutions and more just general creativity. I love to encourage people in being creative and I happen to be one of those makers that dabbles in kind of a lot of different materials. So if you are one of those people, you are in really good company with me because I feel like oftentimes when people ask me, what is your favorite material or what do you do the most? It is sometimes the season of yarn and sometimes it's the season of fabric and sometimes it's a season of painting a lot. So I hope that you're excited to join in on this creativity sort of hour together. Um, I wanna point out a few things. First, there is a download that I've created for you and I doodled it out because that's just kind of how I process things. And it's a download for some 2024 goal setting and goal making and some making goals. And it's just kind of some little boxes we're gonna talk through, but that PDF is available for you in the link in the chat or in the description. So download that. I hope that um, you get inspired even just by that piece of paper, even if you're not able to stay tuned in with us for the whole hour, but I hope that that inspires you. And I wanna point out the chat box to you because I feel like so much of these live events is all about community. And if you have anything that you are really like oh my gosh, struggling with, or oh, this is a goal, or oh, this is something I really wanna use or work on, please use that chat box. Chime in from where you're coming in from or what you love to do or what kind of is a making hurdle or making hump that you hope to get through this year. Or maybe you're like, I don't even know. <laughs> I just wanna go to the craft store and sit. I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is. Chime in on the chat box because we love to hear from you and it's really cool just to kind of see our community come together. But I want to point out this 2024 goal making sheet because um, I have later on in just a little bit, I'm going to get to kind of five different quick projects that hopefully kind of spark some creativity, spark some ideas, but they kind of stem from this worksheet here. So I almost every single night, um, because it's just how my brain operates, I sit down and I doodle on my iPad while I'm watching a TV show or a movie with my husband or my kids, or sometimes I'm just decompressing. And I'm not much of a traditional, um, I would say res resolu resolutionist, if that's a word, resolution person, because I tend to just get overwhelmed by that idea. And I know it's like 11, 12 days into the new year, and this is more m my time. <laughs> maybe I work at a little bit slower pace and maybe you're like me, but I'm not the person that's on like January 1st, we're gonna think through all these changes and things. I feel like I'm still coming down from the holiday crazy. So this, I kind of was doodling over the holiday season and it took me a bit to kind of just digest on like, all right, what are the what are some goals I have? What are some things I want to use in my studio space? What are some new materials I want to try? All those things. And that's where this sheet and this idea came from. I have um, five different boxes or five different sections, as you'll see on here. And feel free to take them as you kind of feel inspired to. But one of the biggest things that I was kind of thinking through when I was making this is this first box right here. It says making habit. And my thought behind that was, okay, Emily, you're not like a crazy person that just wants to dive in and do these crazy resolutions. So what is kind of a small thing that I feel like I can change as far as my making habit? And it took me a while to think on that actually. And I thought, okay, I am not the, the best morning person, but I also do feel like I wake up in the morning and my ideas are always flowing because it's like I wake out of bed and go, oh, that, this was really cool. Or I'm sitting in the shower or whatever, drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. And things are kind of just like going through my mind. And so I wanted to kind of think, okay, I want to make more in the mornings than at nighttime. Because sometimes at nighttime, I feel like I get frazzled and burned out. I don't know if you're like me as a mom and you're doing the dishes or the laundry and the kids are needing help with homework. And then I feel like if I push it off to the afternoons or the evenings, sometimes it, it gets pushed off my plate entirely. So for me, and maybe um, um, for me, a morning making habit would be something that I kind of want to try and incorporate a little bit more or be more intentional about. Maybe it's just a couple days a week. And maybe this box for you is like, heck, I am a full-time lawyer, but I wanna start making every single Monday night with my neighbor or my best friend or something, or every single Friday night, I'm gonna just get out my knitting no matter what I have going on or whatever it is, or Saturday morning, I'm gonna run to the yarn store and I'm gonna sit down in a chair at the yarn store and I'm gonna make whatever you feel like um, can be a small step. Cause I think 
What overwhelms me about resolutions and about making goals or goals in general is how humongous they seem. <laughs> so for me, having small little chunks and small little steps over time, I think would is something that can create a lasting change or a lasting thing. And I'm sure there's like a million studies out there that say that, you know, small steps over time are the things, I don't know, or maybe that's just me making that up, but I, I feel like it's, I've heard it before. <laughs> so I'm trying to translate into the, into the making world. I love that I'm starting to see people chime in in the comments from all the way, oh my word, in California. That means it's early in the morning for you. I love that you're with us. That's awesome. We are in the Midwest in Minnesota and it is not early in the morning. <laughs> um, okay, back to this PDF. I have a few things on here that I think are kind of a thing that a lot of us makers can relate to. One of them is a project I want to resurrect. How many of us, I'm raising my hand in my head and in person, have this like basket corner section of your making studio or your kitchen or something where there's a project that has gone to kind of be almost dead and never to come alive again, where you got stuck, got frustrated, ran out of a material, didn't know how to complete something and it get, you're like, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm gonna set that aside. And then it keeps getting like set aside and pushed and pushed to the side. Hmm, we all have those. And a couple years ago, I started, I'm sure you've seen these. I feel like they're kind of becoming kind of trendy. They're called puff quilts. And my grandma had one a, like a million years ago. And they're like basically, you know, like puffer vests or jackets where there's like sections kind of filled with polyfill or down feathers or something. I, I, I started one and I ran out of the certain puffy <clears throat> excuse me, material that was in the like sections and the grid that you make. And I'm like, oh, I need to order more. And then I couldn't find more. It was over COVID actually because I couldn't find it. And I just didn't really search too hard online. And I just set it aside. And it's been in this bin since 2020, or maybe it was the spring of 2021. And it's never to be touched. <laughs> so I want to resurrect that this year. We all have those projects that we need or want to resurrect. So think about what that would be, because that could be a really fun thing. Or maybe you're like, no, I finish all my projects and I start something and never get distracted, <clears throat> excuse me, and I finish it and that is, I love that that is, that is you because that is not me. <laughs> and I feel like I need to resurrect something. So that puff quilt. And then I simply have a really quick, easy top five things to make in the middle. Of course, that is everybody's sort of, hey, these are the five things I really wanna focus on this year. For me, it's using a few new, new materials. It's doing a new mural in our home. I really wanna do another window display because I feel like challenging myself to make something on a bigger scale is so fun. So that's, that's on my making goals. A material I really wanna try is cray paper. Now it sounds so um, simple, but not like the cray paper, like the strands that you have at Christmas time or at birthdays or, you know, that you kind of twist that you can hang, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but the like, you can make cray paper, uh, pay bigger, you can buy bigger sheets of cray paper and make cray paper flowers or like kind of bigger, cool sculptural elements, especially if you put wire in between them, in between two sheets of paper and they can, you can stretch the paper and they can kind of have a lot of movement to it. So I really want to play around with that material. I don't know much about it other than a few things that I've seen online. So that's, uh, that's a huge thing for me. And then everybody has this section down here, a material from my stash that I want to use. Ha, huh, I have so much yarn at my house and a lot of it is yarn that I half used for a project or half used for like, um, ordered for something and didn't have all of it or didn't use all of it and set something aside maybe, didn't finish and all the things, right? And I have a lot of yarn that I don't, that I wanna use. So I really wanna challenge myself to use the yarn that I have in my stash and not go to the yarn store and try and search for things that could work from things that I already have. So that is just kind of the overall, this 2024 making goals sheet. And the heart behind it for me is that I want to get you excited, just kind of thinking big picture, all the little things, hey, how can these things kind of play out in my year rather than feeling like you have a huge hurdle that you want to get over, but all these little things that you can kind of break down and say, okay, what is something I want to use for my stash? What is something I want to resurrect? What is something I want to try? And all that to say is that sometimes I think we can start years out with um, a million and seven um, ideas and things going on. And I love that, but I also want to encourage us to kind of just like take a breath 
focus on what we think we can do and use the stuff that we have um, in our space already. So that's what this PDF is about and that's kind of how these five projects are inspired. So really quickly, I also wanna jump back to the chat because I wanna hear about all of your 2024 making plans. And I see um, that, oh my gosh, Bonita, you are planning to participate in the so long that she signed up for. Okay, so longs are actually quite amazing. I've participated in one of them and one of the only quilts that I've finished was from a so long because it was the accountability piece to get things done and the, the weekly instructional step-by-step -step things, which I think was very inspiring for me. Maybe it would feel stifling for you, I don't know, but a lot of local quilt shops a lot of local quilt guilds, a lot of probably even Facebook groups have a lot of those so longs, which I think are so cool. I would love to hear, that's really fun. Maybe it's not a quilt, maybe it's just like a bag or something, but that's still really amazing. Um, oh, and she's just gonna get the pattern. Yay, okay, but I really wanna hear, um, I really, really, really wanna hear what your, your uh, 2024 making goals are because I see a lot of people chiming in from across the country and I'd love to hear that and see that. So, okay, I wanna show you this project. One of my favorite things in the entire world that I'm, that I'm encouraging myself because I wanna use up my yarn stash is, to, is pom poms because pom poms are, as you can see, I have some on my ear, ears here. Pom poms are one of those quick, I would say five minute crafts, five minute things. Kids can do them, teenagers can do them. People who don't craft that much can do them, and pom-poms are one of the happiest little things. In fact, circles are proven to be one of the happiest shapes. <laughs> if, I don't know why that's a scientific fact, but it is. And I wanna show you quickly how you can make one of the most perfect pom-poms that will just brighten your day. So, I have this example right here. I have a pom-pom just like on, as a zipper pull. This is a swimsuit bag. It has like the, you know, wet bag material in it. But something this little happy, can you can add to a, a backpack zipper, a purse zipper, a wallet. You can put them on earrings. You can put them on a keychain, make a necklace out of them. I'm not sure. So I have a couple different ways that I want to show you how to make them. So grab your yarn. And I, I also use embroidery thread. Thank you. Um, for our pom-poms. So these right here are pom-pom makers. And you don't have to have these at all. You can just simply use a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, a box, something that is like really easy to use. The, th the, thing, the thing that you will decide or think about when you're making the size of your pom-pom is for these pom-pom makers, the size of the pom-pom maker is about the size of the pom-pom you will end up with. So like this one, for instance, is these right here. So like the size of this maker is about the size of what these pom-poms are trimmed down to be. Like, I mean, about, right, roughly about that size. So if you're using just like a, you know, this is just a tag. If you're using just a tag, it would be about half-ish the size of it by the time it got trimmed down because these are a lot easier to fill with more yarn so that there's less trimming. These are harder to fill but still work well. I actually learned how to make palms as a teenager on a fork. <laughs> so maybe you have an extra fork laying around. But I want to show you really quickly how easy it is to make a super happy perfect palm or close to perfect palm. So you can use any yarn you have and all you need is a chunk. It doesn't have to be a zillion million yards of yarn. This yarn is called Omega Krill Yarn and it's kind of thin, which I love because it makes the pom-poms, that's what I have on these pom earrings, it makes the pom-poms really kind of like fluffy. And these are, this is the difference, I guess. This is regular kind of thick, chunky yarn, and this is more fine. This is what this Omega Krill is. It's just a different texture is all it is. And these, I feel like this Omega Krill yarn, because it's fully acrylic, holds up really well. Normally, I'm not a fan of anything acrylic, but these hold up really well. So it's just this thin, um, Yarn, it's three strands. It's, so it's kind of like embroidery floss, but doesn't separate because it's kind of already separated is what I would maybe compare it to. You'll open up your palm maker, which is two letter C's with a big circle in the middle. And what you're gonna essentially do is fill your palm maker from side to side with as much yarn as you can, just going back and forth. Whoop. And I'm using one solid color but if you don't have a solid color or you're trying to use up scraps, you can make 
a ombre pom-pom by, by kind of melding two colors together or two random scraps of yarn together. You can make a speckled pom-pom by using mainly one color and kind of interspersing um, another color by wrapping like wrapping whoop, the ends at the same time. So I would grab like this other yellow and intersperse it. You could make um, two pom-poms that start that one side is one color, one side is the other, and it would be like a bobber, <laughs> you know, like half and half. That would work. I've done that before. But essentially, I want you to see, this takes not much time, but I'm just trying to make it even and fill out this entire C shape to make this flat. So you wrap, 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 wrap forever and ever. Okay, do you see how as I'm filling this back and forth, I'm not going over these knobs, but rather I'm filling it up with yarn to make this flat right here because I wanna get it as full and happy and round as possible. And you know what, look at, I'm gonna use all this mustard color and I'm gonna add in this sunshine yellow. So this is gonna be a great example of using up two different colors of yarn that I had for some project that I can't even tell you what it was for. As I'm wrapping, I'm gonna check our little comments here. Oh my word, you guys have so much going on. Um, I, oh, Kathleen says, I jump into new projects and buy the supplies and after a month or so I get bored. I want to not buy anything new this year. Okay, you, the, same. That is so me where I, I am the same, where I buy supplies and I have a lot of it, hence yarn, which I do use all the time, but then it sits there and you're like, oh, I have this other color. And you go home and go, oh, I actually have that exact same color that I just bought at the store. <laughs> so I love, Kathleen, that you're gonna challenge yourself. It's kind of like when you are trying to um, cut your grocery budget and you're like, oh, I have a lot in the freezer that I could use up rather than going to the store. <laughs> same idea, right? <laughs> okay, so now that I've finished this one side, of my letter C shape. I'm gonna squish it in and then whoop, and then fill in this other side. So you essentially have two halves that we're gonna be full of yarn on each side. I'm just gonna do the same thing by, whoops. Sometimes it takes a bit to start because these things are a little wiggly. There we go. And fill in this other side as well. Pom pom making is so fun to do with kids. And when, when, we, when my kids were littler, we made, there was one night, I don't even remember what, why, but we made a million pom-poms and turned them into pom-pom monsters. <laughs> we glued on googly eyes and the monsters got moved around in our planter, in our like plants, you know, like the, um, pl the round planter bowl that you plant a plant in for a really long time. I don't know what's happening there, there we go. And I do believe there's actually some still hiding in plants. So the little monster, pom-pom monsters, and some of them had uh, um, like little like eyes coming off the top of their heads, like on a on a uh, like piece of wire. Some of them had feet. Some of them had n one eye in the middle made out of felt with a, like a huge eye, you know, like Mike Wazowski or something from Monsters Incorporated. <laughs> it was really fun, but it's fun to let your creativity go with something as simple like this project. I see a lot of people are wanting to be more sustainable um, in the comments here with their 2024 goals, with using sustainable materials, using up what they have. This is, this is amazing. I feel like we're kind of all on the same wavelength in that way, which is super cool. Okay. Wrap, 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 wrap. I see too, I have two totes full of yarn <laughs> to make palms. Perfect. You can make a million palms, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what that yarn is calling out to do. <laughs> okay, because the cool thing about palms is you can use something as thin as this. You can use something as thick as bulky. It's really cool. This is like DK or worsted weight. I believe this one right here. Hey, do you see my side is now full? Choop, I'm going to cut that off and all I'm going to do is put these together. So this step is about the same as this step that I pre-wrapped with these um, just the, the, the alternate, I would say, way to make palms. So I like to use embroidery thread. Some people like to use wax thread. Some people like to use the yarn itself. Totally does not matter. I feel like embroidery thread is super strong. That's why I choose to use it. And I also have a jar of random embroidery thread. So this is a way that I can use up this stash. 
So I'm going to cut a section that is kind of long because I want to be able to wrap it multiple times. And before I do that, there's two grooves right here in the pom-pom maker. And if you are doing these with kiddos, I recommend you do this step because what you'll want to do is cut open where you're going to put your um, ah, thread here. So do you see the groove? It's now easier to see that groove in the pom-pom maker. I'm going to cut that open on both sides without letting the actual maker open itself, like open all the way up. Sharp scissors are your friend for this project. Trim, trim, trim. Ta-da! And then all I'm going to do is take this piece right here, and I'm going to go around in the groove, in that groove. And I like to kind of crisscross a few times. So I'm going to cross it again and go back around, and I'm going to tie it and pull it tight. And what you don't want to do is like, use your muscles and wrench it so tight because you're just going to inevitably break your yarn or your wax thread or your embroidery floss. So I just tie it back and forth across the palm a few times and you can kind of see it cinching in the middle because what this is doing is it's cinching all these tiny little yarns that are the same size and and then you're gonna tie it a couple times to finish it off. Wah! And here's my pro tip for making the best palms in the entire world. And if you've seen me demonstrate palms before, you know what this tip is. And this is going to be before you open up your palm maker, you're gonna give it a haircut first. Because a lot of people say, I can't make palms because it's really hard to make them round. This is the tip that's going to make them round forever and ever, amen. Because it'll make it a lot easier to give it a haircut. Because a good palm has a good haircut. So, I'm going to just trim my palm in my circle shape before I even take it out of the maker. Because look at how already circular this is. It's basically giving me a guide to trim it into a circle. Now, it's not going to be perfect. Make sure not to trim your little um, tie situation here. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be a heck of a lot easier to give your pom-pom a haircut when you're taking it out already circular like this. Now, if you are doing one of these pom-poms, you will slide off and this, I'm just going to kind of show you, this is essentially this right here. So you will simply tie your string around here, clip these ends, and that would be exactly what this is going to be. So, it does look like a bobber. I like to roll it in my hands, and then all you're going to do is give your pom-pom a haircut. So you're just cutting in a circular motion to make it as round as possible. And anytime you see any of these sort of like more squarish corners or squarish ends, that's what you're going to trim. So... Okay, you get the idea though, right? So just keep kind of rolling it and fluffing it up in your hand. I mean, it's pretty, woo, <laughs> the fluffy kind of went everywhere. It's pretty awesome. I love playing around with two-toed palms because this one is fully trimmed, so you can see it's a lot more round. This one's pretty darn, pretty darn good, but not 100%. If I were to finish this off, I would keep trimming it, but you get the idea. The idea here is to use up your yarn stash, find a fun way to make some pom-poms. You can add them to party, birthday party toppers. You can add them to make them into little cake toppers. You can add them into garland, anything. So that's just a fun little quick five minute project that if you have pom pom makers, use them. If you don't, you can use a cardboard box, a fork, or anything that you can wrap yarn around. Easy project. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink of water. Okay, I buy a craft, Mar Marcia says this. How many of us have been guilty of this? Raise your hand because I feel like we all are. I buy a craft item because I see a video or blog and then I can't remember what the project was or where I saw it. That is that is 100% me also. You see something and it kind of gets your, your brain thinking and down the trail of, hey, I've always wanted to do that or hey, I want to use it or hey, this is super cool. <laughs> and then you never finish it or start it. <laughs> so perhaps some of these five, five, five minute quick projects will inspire you to use some of those, I hope. 
I hope. Oh, Bonita is asking what brand of scissors I use. These are one of my favorite scissors in the whole world. They are LDH scissors. And I know there's a million different kinds of scissors out there that are very sharp. To me, these are so sharp. Now, now, okay, hear me out. I don't know if you had a mom similar to me, but I had a mom that sewed a lot and she had fabric scissors and she had paper scissors. <laughs> and so many times I used her fabric scissors on paper and she would be like, oh my gosh. Okay, I've used these scissors on paper and fabric and they've never dulled before. I'm sure I probably could sharpen them and they would be amazing, but I love them. These are just Fisker scissors that I use that I brought to use on paper today. I'm not like a scissors connoisseur, but I really do love these ones. They just are really sharp, they're handmade and they're like, they're forged which I think is what makes them more shears rather than scissors. I don't know, maybe somebody else can chime in about your scissors recommendation. But speaking of paper, we all probably have a million paper scraps and things in our stash, right? I do all the time. And one of the things I've gotten in the habit of doing, especially around this holiday season, is making little gift card holders. So I thought, hey, how could I make that for a birthday party? So all I did, this literally is a stash of paper that I pulled out of my paper scraps and I made this little birthday cake, birthday little gift card holder that you can just slide in right here. So there's a slot between the back of the cake and the middle of the cake. And here's one thing that I, that I wanna encourage you to do. If you have an idea in your head, all you need to do is simply start drawing it out or thinking about how you can make the shapes in your head. And that can become your pattern. That's how this was born. I thought, okay, hey, I wanna make a birthday cake piece into a little gift card holder. So all I did was draw a little birthday cake similar to this shape and think, okay, how can I break that apart to make them into pattern pieces? So what it became was this piece to lay over top of the back, right? So I literally had a piece of paper and now I digitized it so that I could reuse it over and over again. But I literally had a piece of paper where I was sketching out my cake and then I thought, okay, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna I sketch the cake and then I thought, okay, I need this to be a separate piece so then this became a separate piece that's going on top. And this is right here, the slot that will become the, the holder. And I thought, okay, I wanna make it look like it's layered cake because to make it tall enough to be able to put the gift card in it, it has to be layered. So that's where I added these stripes. We have candles on this one. There's like some buttercream detail. This one, I thought we could make, whoops, which this wouldn't probably be realistic because if you think about it, the cake frosting is usually on the top and the side, but we're just gonna make the top separate here. And I wanna just show you how easy it is to construct this. So, ta-da, there's my little cake top. And a lot of times I use just like, you know, um, paper glue, but today I'm just using hot glue because that's what I got. And it's really easy and very stickable right there. And then to make my slot here, this is a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna flip this over and trim it. But to make my slot for the gift card holder, all I'm going to do is glue around these three edges so that I can slide my gift card in it. And the, the goal or the point of, of a project like this is really just simply to say, hey, I have a million pieces of paper scrap, like a lot of us are saying are part of our making goals on um, in my drawer, or in my studio, or in my craft space, or wherever it is. How can I use that, not just to have something else around or to, to use it, but how can I use it in a productive way? My glue thing is not working, there we go. How can I use it in a productive way that will like make me use it to gift it or to use it and not just have it sitting in a drawer or in a stash somewhere. So that's kind of the heart behind a project like this. So all I did was put glue around the three edges and ta-da, look, it becomes a little pocket for a gift card. Oops, I didn't get this part down here. Or maybe a note, maybe it becomes a a little note holder for something. Either way, this project is a quick paper buster. Ta-da! And then maybe I wanted to add, I cut out these little confetti pieces because who doesn't love funfetti cake? <laughs> so here, to finish this off, I could add 
some strips of little funfetti pieces, happy birthday, Suzanne, or whatever. But here, something super simple that all I did was sketch out on a piece of white printer paper to say, okay, I wanna make this, how big would I make it? Let me think about the gift card size. How could I make it a pocket? Okay, I could separate the background and the foreground. Voila, totally customizable, an easy way to use up your scraps in an actual productive way. This is, this easily could fit into an envelope, like just a normal five by seven envelope that you have laying around your house. So hopefully that's a little inspiration for you, a little quick project. Um, oh, Mar Mar Marsha says, I've been hearing good things about the LDH scissors. Good, I love that, I love that, that's so cool. Okay, um, okay, here's another thing I wanna show you. I wanna show you that probably many of you have this in your house. If you have kids, beads, perler beads. <laughs> so I'm not much of a jewelry person, but I am an earring wearer. And my kids have kind of grown out of the perler bead craze. And at one point in my life, I remember seeing somebody talk about how you can kind of use these kind of materials in your world that have gone to the never never land that you don't really use that much anymore and so these perler beads for instance when you when you use an iron and either set it on the heat setting between pieces of parchment paper and um, push down they melt and they melt to become flat i want to show you these ones are not these particular colorway of beads but here and they're not perfectly shaped because you just kind of melt them. You can also put them on a piece of parchment paper, put them in your oven. I believe it's 400 degrees for two to three minutes and the door is cracked open just a little bit and they melt and they squish enough, but they still keep a little tiny hole in the middle, which I think is really cool. So I don't, I don't, I, I um, want you to take precaution because perler beads are plastic and I don't want you to use any of your cookware that you would use to cook something for you or your kids or your family and melt beads on them. <laughs> but if you have extra stuff like a garage sale or maybe you have stuff laying around your house that you could use for this type of a project, I'm not saying you have to use perler beads, but I'm just trying to encourage you to use something that you have in your house or your stash. So I was playing around with these and look at, okay, I wanna put one of these in because I wanna show you. I made these super cute, they're, see I just put them on fishing line, which I'm sure every jewelry person would say, oh my word, Emily, fishing line, that's not, a, that's not something you should use for jewelry. But look how fun that is. Okay, I wanna show you how I did this. Again, I have fishing line in my stash because I used it to make a balloon garland at one point in my life and I did not need it anymore. This is a 25 pound fishing line. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it means you can catch a 25 pound fish, but it's thicker fishing line. And for me, this is what I have laying around. So all I've done, to make my two strands right here is I strung some of these beads onto some strands. I need to put a few more beads on this one, but wow, fishing line is a little bit um, tricky, but I'm just going to string a few more beads onto here and then I'm going to show you just kind of how I problem solve to finish it because this is not really a tutorial. Whoops. This is not really a tutorial that I watched. It's just kind of an idea that I had to say, Hey, let me use up some of these materials to make something. And I so believe as crafters, as people, as humans, that we need little tiny sort of victories and wins to keep going or keep us inspired. And sometimes these little five minute, you know, gift card holder out of some paper stash, paper in your stash or pom poms give you those little wins that you can see a finished project and go, oh my gosh, I'm inspired by the colors that I used, or I'm inspired by the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the textures or the way that the things lay with each other. I don't know, like lay on top of each other or lay next to each other. Like, I just think it's so cool. So that's, that's my goal with these. I, for some reason, don't know where these came from, have crimp beads in my little stash of the small amount of jewelry things. Crimp beads mean that you can put two th um, things on, like if for instance these strings, I'm gonna put these four strings together and I'm gonna squish it and they crimp everything together. <laughs> there, I, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a traditional thing that a jeweler uses or that a jewelry artist would use, but this is what I felt would work to hold the fishing line. And I wanted just to use what I had without um, use the beads that I had and then use the other materials that I had without having to go to the store. 
So here, all I did was put those four strands into this little bead, and then I'm going to take my pliers, make sure that they're kind of like about the same size as my other earring. Yeah, that looks about right. And then simply, whoops, take my pliers, and then simply smoosh it. And look, it smooshes it, so now it's totally in place and they're on there forever and ever, amen. So, okay. So now I'm gonna take another crimp bead and a jump ring, because I only know how to attach the earring things to the jump ring. Oh, there's another one already out, just kidding. And then here's a earring back, which I do always have in my stash because I make pom-pom earrings or tassel earrings all the time. That is a really good gift for somebody, actually, by the way. If somebody is an earring person, make a simple set of pom-pom earrings, and it is like one of the happiest things I think you can wear. So I'm going to put on, um, I'm just gonna trim this, go like this. I'm gonna put on my jump ring and my crimp bead. Again, I just kind of made this up to see if this would hold and work, and it seemed to. So I will now string my four strands back through this crimp bead. If you are a jewelry person and you are saying, oh my word, Emily, this is the worst technique, that is okay. I would love for you to offer technique to somebody, like, to the rest of the community if you feel like this is not right. But okay, two strands through, and then all four strands through. Holy moly. I don't know how fishermen can do it. This stuff is hard to hold. Okay. <laughs> I'm concentrating far too hard on this. <laughs> so I'm gonna, essentially this is what I'm doing. I'm putting all four of these strands through this crimp bead so that I can hold the jump ring that's going to hold the earring little hook deal. That's the, that's the plan here. So, and maybe my um, fishing line is like just the right amount of thickness that it's getting tripped up in here. I love, oh my word, a lot of you are saying that you wanna make pom-pom garlands. I love that because a good pom-pom garland is not just for the holidays. It can be for birthday parties, for Arbor Day, Easter, anything, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, anything in the doldrums of winter <laughs> that you feel like you want to decorate for. Okay, so here we go. I did it. You see how all four of those now are going to be holding this jump ring in place, hopefully. And I'm going to just pull these all square. There's got to be a way that fishermen can hold these things better because <laughs> I'm certainly not good at it. I'm just measuring to make sure each one of my earrings will fall at the same place in my ear. And this one is a little bit taller. Voila, this looks pretty darn good to me. Pretty close. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to crimp and squish this bead again, that, that second crimp bead that I put there. And then just simply trim my Ta -da! There, look at that. Isn't that cool? I have one, two little, I don't know, strands. And then all I'm gonna do quickly is take another little jump ring and my pliers and add them. I used two pl pl pair of pliers to open these rings. I think I got a pack of these jump rings probably like 10 years ago and they have been in my stash forever because I don't use them that often. Open this up, add this and my earring back on, and then meet them back up again, close it. Just gonna pinch it, Ugh! and look. I have a set of earrings from my kids' beads that they're not using anymore. <laughs> Or that now I guess I could say I'm using, but they're pretty happy and colorful and fun. And I feel like this could be a really easy gift or just something to celebrate winter for yourself. <laughs> so that's a quick little bead project. And if you're like, no, Emily, I don't have any beads, grab some string, grab some yarn, grab some embroidery floss, look up some um, friendship bracelet tutorials online. Those are so fun. And I know those are a little bit longer than a five minute 
little quick win, but they're really fun to make. They're also really fun to teach your kids how to make. <laughs> okay, I have two more projects. The next one is something that I feel like I use all the time, which is felt. So if you've bought those felt squares, those acrylic felt squares, and they're in your stash, and you're like, what am I going to do with them because I've used my, them for the project I have, I want to show you. You can make felt. I'm so passionate about using felt because it's such a fun material. I made some stuffies. These are the, like, the bluey characters for my daughter for Christmas because I didn't want to go to the store and buy them. So this one is a little bit more complicated of a pattern, or you can do something literally as simple as making these um, citrus coasters. So simple. It's the same idea, I would say, the same idea as what we were doing when we were making our um, uh, card holders. If you have an idea in your brain, I want you to get out a sketchbook or a blank piece of paper and just start drawing out your shapes. So if you're making, let's just, for instance, use this as an example, I want to make some citrus coasters. It's easy to, to make a circle or trace a glass or a bowl for your outside and you want another, another ring, a, white, a whiter, like the, the pith, I think is what it's called, ring, trace another circle, sketch it out, and then you'll have your six or seven or five or however many shapes you have inside to make the little squares or the, the triangles, and which is the same as our orange pieces. So something as simple as taking a white piece of paper, jotting down your ideas, or finding a shape that you really like, um, and using up your stash. The reason I love felt so much is because it's super colorful and it doesn't require a lot of finishing, which I think is amazing. So if, if you don't have a sewing machine, this is a material that it does not matter if you don't have a sewing machine. If you don't know how to sew, totally fine. All you need is literally a, a spool of thread, a needle, and a pair of scissors, which I absolutely love. So I'm gonna show you two different stitches in hopes to inspire you on whatever your next felt project is. The first stitch is called a running stitch. Now a running stitch, if you have your, your piece of fabric, goes literally, it goes up, down, up, down through your fabric. So it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up and it goes down and it just tacks things. It's a very super easy, super simple running stitch. So to do that, this is a really fun thing to teach kids. It's a really fun thing to teach kids and then sew with them. <laughs> I never, ever, ever tie knots in my string. <clears throat> you might have people that do tell you to tie knots in your string. My grandma used to say, knotten is rotten, so I just never learned to tie knots in my string. Instead, I make an X. I make an X and then I cross it again to anchor my stitch. I'm gonna show you on this red fabric so that it's really obvious to see. So to anchor my stitch, I go one way and the other way in an X and then I go back that original way. And look at, can you hear that? It's like snapping, like it's so strong and I didn't have to make a knot and it's almost invisible. So make an X and then, so one way, this way, and then go back through that original way. Running stitch. So this is how I attached my um, uh, orange slices, orange fruit pieces to the pith then attached it, excuse me, to the, to the rind. You go down and up. And down <laughs> and up. Now, any person that does hand stitching is going to say, the key to make your hand stitching look professional is all in the consistency of how hard you pull your thread and how wide you make your stitches. So the more even you can make your stitches, which means perfectly spaced out or as spaced out as you want or as spaced out as you can to make it as even as possible, and then how hard you pull. Because if you pull super, super hard, it's gonna start um, gathering like that. And if you make it super loosey-goosey, you're not gonna have a nice like seam, if you will. So keep that in mind. Now the next stitch that I like to um, do is a blanket stitch. And that is all around the edges here to close something off. Now this is the little bluey character, but do you see how it nicely puts two pieces of felt or two pieces of, um, this is fleece, or two pieces of something that doesn't, it's not like a, a, a cotton or something that's gonna fray. And that is just an, a stitch that's along the edge. And it's pretty simple. Again, it's all in the consistency of how much you pull your thread and how even your stitches are. So let me show you that. It's going right along the edge here. I'm gonna attach two pieces. 
and all you will do is go up and hang on I need to anchor my stitch <laughs> I had to think about that for a second okay I go up and I'm gonna keep going up from the bottom but before I pull it tight you see it's kind of hard to see I'm gonna put my hand behind it there's a loop right here and I will put my needle through the loop okay I'm gonna do that again I will go up and there's my loop so before I pull it tight I will put my needle through the loop up and then put my needle through the loop and see what the whoops see what this does is it creates a stitch along the edge and it gathers it so it's kind of has this finish right here along the edge so if felt is something that you're excited about using want to explore have fun with there are a million different patterns out there or you can take what's in your brain and say oh my gosh i want to make a stuffed birthday cake for my daughter or i want to make a play food for my nephew or my grandkid or something because felt is so fun and how tactile it is and it actually i have found in the crazies of being a mom that sitting down and hand stitching is so regulating and so therapeutic and so awesome so i want to encourage you in that that wasn't necessarily on my 2024 making sheet just because I use felt all the time, but I still wanted to show it to you. It was my way of sneaking in how much I love felt. Okay, the very last project I wanna show with you is something so simple. Again, it goes back to the stash or using up your stash of paper and it is something so easy and so wonderful. And okay, this, this comment actually just caught my eye. Teresa says, I have a lot of ribbon. You've got me thinking. And that actually has me thinking about this next project because ribbon could be so cool for this. Okay, do you remember paper chains from when you were a kid? <laughs> Please tell me you do. I feel like the, I, I made this chain as we were counting down last year um, for a, a trip for my kids. And that was a lot of, I feel like, the way that a lot of kids or families use paper chains or, or schools even of like, let's count down to the last day of school or till summer break or whatever. And you take off one chain every day to Christmas break or spring break or a trip. And I just had this, it was a, it was a, um, one color uh, or like uh you know eight and a half by eleven and there was a, a chunk at the top that i had used for something and so i had one color of all of one piece of paper of all of these colors but it was a chunk missing at the top so it wasn't a full piece that i could like feed through a printer or use for anything traditional so i just cut them into strips and i got like i think eight or six one inch one and a quarter inch strips or something out of it and so that's what this made is this paper chain right so in the same way, I have this leftover paper that I want to show you how to make a super simple, oh, look at this cute little garland. It actually is kind of citrusy now that I just did that citrus stitching. Um, all I'm doing is take my handy dandy fishing yarn or fishing string here and I'm going to trace a circle. And you can make this any size. I'm just making it this size because I had a fishing spool. And I am going to cut that in half because I want to make two of these circles. I'm just cutting out the circle because I will fold my circle in half to make my bunting. Another fun project for kids especially if you are needing to kind of revamp um, a kid's room or a corner for a birthday cake at a birthday party or something. And all I'm gonna do is simply fold my circle in half. It's this simple. Stick it on my string, put a bead of glue. Hang on, I need another thing, there we go. Put a bead of glue and a little bit more glue, and then, ta-da! And I can repeat, keep repeating all of my colors. My hot glue gun is acting up today. <laughs> Naturally, why would it be? Awesome, here we go. And just keep repeating my colors in a way. 
You can do the same thing with squares, with rectangles that you fold over. I like folding over a piece of string because then it doesn't matter how you hang it, where you hang it, or how it gets displayed. Both sides are displayed beautifully and it kind of gives, um, I feel like when you, when you hang something over a string, it gives weight or uh, um, I don't know, it, it hangs nicely. I don't even know if that's, I'm sure there's some like physics reason to that, but it hangs really nicely. So super simple, use up your scraps and you don't even have to use repeating colors. You could use whatever colors you have <laughs> in your stash. So the idea here is to look at the different areas of your making space, your studio, your stash, the ideas you have in your brain on your 2024 making goals and say, what are the little things that I can do to, to use up my materials or to make my ideas or my goals happen or to challenge myself in a new way? And I don't have every thought fully formated, f formulated for all the five things that I want to complete for this year that are on my making sheet. But I do have little things in my brain because now that I've written them out, I can go, okay, one of the things is that I, that I want to do this dollhouse makeover with Esther, my daughter. And already preparing for this, I found all these scraps of paper that we could put together to make wallpaper or whatever. So it's, I do feel like the practice of sitting down using up materials, making these small little five minute or 10 minute things gives you these wins so that you're able to kind of like spiral your thoughts and your ideas and your designs into something bigger and better. So I hope that this 2024 making goals sheet has inspired you. I wanna jump over one more time over to the comments and see if there's any questions um, or ideas that people have, have shouted out because I love the community aspect of these live events. Um, Oh, uh, can you use any of these these smaller scale to make yarn markers? Oh my gosh, I assume these, the little felt, these would be really fun for yarn markers or even the earrings that I um, made. You absolutely could make these into yarn markers. I believe you can get the, um, the, the, the yarn marker circle piece, you know, that you can either attach or it's sometimes like a, um, the letter U that you attach, and you could easily put beads on them or make a charm out of polymer clay or make a little felt um, cute little thing or mini pom-pom. <laughs> How cute would that be? That is absolutely, I actually one time made wine glass markers for a friend of mine and put different colors of little pom-poms on the wine glass markers, and that was a really fun little gift I gave her. Um, okay, there are quilts. A lot of people are doing quilts, holy moly. That is so cool because that is, that, is a, that is a project. I love that. Learn free motion ruler quilting. Oh, that is free motion, um, for those of you who don't know, is when you drop your feed dogs, which are the things that grab your, your fabric in your sewing machine. And that is so fun because you can kind of draw with your, with, your, with your thread. And I love that idea. I've never done a ton of free motion except for with like a couching foot. I've never done free motion quilting. And that is beautiful. <gasps> Rhea says she's gonna do origami. She got a kit for Christmas from her brother. Origami paper is gorgeous. And I think it, oh my word, that sounds amazing. I love that people are throwing out all these ideas. More pom-poms, uh, sustainable materials. We talked a lot about that. Sewing garments, that's cool. Thrift flips. That is huge right now, finding garments. Garments feels like a whole different world that I don't even understand that much. So I love that I, thrift flips are so fun. I love that. This is so cool. I wish there's moments where I'm like, oh my word, we should just get a little community together in person. We can all throw out ideas and bring things into a stash and <laughs> share, share materials. So that's, that's fun. That's the fun thing about these live events. I want to just, I want to just say one more time. I hope that this 2024 making goals sheet is something that you download and fill out and have fun with and play around with because more than anything ever for this year, I just want to encourage you in your creativity, encourage you in how you're gifted with what you make or what you love or what you're, you're, you're inspired by. And I really want to encourage you to dive deeper into that and have fun, use up the materials you have in your stash and just create some amazing things for this 2024 year. Thanks for joining us. I hope this hour has inspired you and I hope that it gets you jump started to an awesome 2024 year of making. We'll see you next time.